uh, you'll like this. Um, I'll get I'll get kind of people introduced as we okay get going a little bit just because there's some new people. But um, the fairways for warriors, guys. Tom Underdog. Yeah. So you did, did you do a, a tournament this year? No. Fairways? No. no. Yeah. Anyways, he wanted to start a <laughs> webinar for just his guys. So we started out with eight, then about an hour later, I got 10. Anyways, we started an hour before I started, we ended up with 24 people. Wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah. so um, it's very good. And they're they're kind of beginners and you know how the fairway guys are and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, they're all really good, um, but a couple of them now want to become instructors. So we're going to do a certification program with them. Ooh. Yeah, so, oops, I got to keep you on early. Uh, rename this here. That's Marissa hey. Richmond. Good morning, Marissa. I'm Kay. Actually, it's Stacy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Marissa's name always comes up because uh, I guess she opened up this site. So I'm renaming it. <laughs> I have to do this with all my art class things. So good morning, everybody. Hi. Yes, we've got some, some new people on today, and it's still a couple minutes to nine, so I'm going to just wait a little bit to introduce people. Normally, we the group kind of all knows each other, so we just all start talking about Golf 8.5. <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, proceed. <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, I was going to actually bring up a little bit and and start a little uh, pool on who thought that the... Uh, the, the um, I won't even call it a tournament today, the, the challenge today between um, oh. the golfers and, and Charles Barkley and Phil, who, who you thought might win. No thought. I don't even know about that. Oh, it's on at three o'clock today. It, last year, it was Tiger and, and, and Manny. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was great last year at uh, Peyton Manning, Tiger and Peyton Manning, right? Or no, not Peyton Manning, um, Tom Brady. It was Tom Brady and Brady who split his pants. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That's right. I didn't realize they were doing that again this year. Well, the only pro is, is Phil and he's playing with Charles Barkley. And then you've got, oh, I know, this should be quite I interesting. <laughs> And then it's hey, I think you and I could go out there and take them. <laughs> I think we could. <laughs> yeah, we could, I could even play left-handed maybe. And get, okay. <laughs> maybe me too. <laughs> I, I haven't seen Charles um, swing in a while, but it used to look pretty bad. So it's hard to bet on him. It really is. But supposedly I heard somebody saying this morning that since he's been playing a little bit with Phil, they've probably been practicing. The swing looks a little smoother. So now you're here, you got, you know, Phil who swings, you know, all over the place. And then you got Charles who does it in segments. <laughs> so. Very segmented, yeah. Very segmented. So I, um, I do have to say though, Charles' commentary is awesome. Like he is the best commentator. He's so entertaining. He is so funny. Yeah. Funny. Well, let me start out. It is, it's still one minute to Some people are still popping on, but yes. Oh. And Candy's getting dressed. <laughs> See, no, I like, just got back from workout class. <laughs> so, a, I did it, I, I get a little chilled. Hang on one second. Um, oh, oh, oops. On the Q&A. call on the Q&A. Someone's just texting me. Anyway. Um, Donna is. So let me start out with Shannon. Um, I want to do a few um, introductions today because some of the people are new and Shannon is my <laughs> best friend <laughs> of how we met in a workshop and we down in um, Orlando. Now it's been four years ago, something like that. And Shannon, why don't you introduce yourself? You're, she's still in Orlando, but she's at one of the uh, best, best, bestest clubs in Orlando. Um, very famous where all the major pros used to play, including Tiger. So, and right? Payne. Yeah, Payne. Um, I work at Orange Tree Golf Club. I'm one of the managers there. And uh, 
met Kay, like we, like she said, in one of the workshops and was just fantastic. We hit it off golf wise, but we hit it off personality wise even better. And so, so yeah, we, we're besties now. So um, I try and work with Kay whenever I can. And yeah, so that's about it. I've been at Orange Tree for two, since 2006. So for quite a long time. Can, since I started with you, can yeah. you give a little history um, of the club, how it started, your, your grandfather, uh, yeah. right? So uh, my grandfather actually um, had a partner and they teamed up with Arvida. And if anybody's familiar with Orlando at all, Arvida was a huge uh, building community uh, in, in Orlando in the 70s and 80s. Um, and then about, so that was 1972, the orange tree was built. And then um, in the early 80s, my grandfather and his partner bought out Arvida. And then in the late 80s, yeah, late 80s, my uh, grandfather bought out his partner. So it's been in the family since it was built. So it's a huge, uh, it feels like home to me. And it's a huge sense of pride for me to be working there and be part of it. So. And she's a, a very good golfer herself. And <laughs> so, um, I get out yeah. There. Uh, okay. Let me have uh, Cheryl introduce herself. Just we'll go through people real quick. So I'm going down my alphabetical order with the things that pop up. <clears throat> so I've been with um, Kay. Gosh, Kay, it's probably been seven, eight years now, I think. And how many? Ten? Ten. <laughs> Has it been 10 years? Oh, Time flies. I was having fun. I Cranwell. <laughs> so I've been working with Kate for about 10 years. Um, when I started, I was about at eight, nine, hit trending up. And <clears throat> this year, I've been mainly around a three. Near the end of the season, my handicap's gone up just because golf is challenging near the end of the season with conditions. But. Um, so I'm at a five right now, but that's not where I've been most of the year. But um, I love the 8.5 um, process and love working with Kay and really enjoy it and enjoy being on these calls. Um, I, I always will tell this since, since we have new people, but Cheryl comes and takes these lessons and she's also um, soothing my feelings because she never hits the ball very well during the lessons. And she says, Kate, it'll get better. I don't care how I hit it in the lessons. And I'm like, it, you know, like I'm expecting her to hit it well. She never hits it well in the lessons. And then she comes back and she says, my handicap is now dropped. So it's always nice to hear that during the lesson, she's not having any expectations. So it's great, but I'm always telling that story. Oh, sometimes I don't even get the ball airborne during the lesson. And I'm like, Kate, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm all right with it. I'm not, I know I'm not. <laughs> it's like I'm just trying to make sure I understand what I'm supposed to be doing. All right. So since I got Frank on too, um, I'll just segue right over to Frank. How's that? Yeah, sounds great. You're so, somewhere in the same house, I think. Yeah, yeah, different. We're at different levels, but that's pretty much consistent with my golf game. He's upstairs. I'm downstairs. <laughs> And um, while Cheryl's handicap is an eight or a nine, I'm uh, about a 15 right now. And I had my first pretty thorough lesson with um, on, in the summertime with Kay and um, probably learned way more than my little brain could handle. Um, but I've been practicing it and, um, you know, so far so good. Um, my biggest thing is, as a few of you might have heard some time ago was is practice. and. Um, taking all of these drills and um, I think if you practice quite a bit you're going to do very very well my uh, I don't practice as much as I should though and uh, and as a result it's a little bit frustrating um, a good news side of things uh, with Cheryl taking lessons from Kay whenever I'm playing with her it's like having K times two so I, I, I get overloaded <laughs> with, with all kinds of lessons while I'm on the course. Um, so anyway, that's it. That's about it for now. My, my lowest was a nine. That was years ago. We played at Crumpet Fox for a long time. Um, but, you know, you get a little bit older, you lose a little bit of your strength and flexibility and um, things change. So I'm kind of happy with the 15 and uh, at this point looking for a very quick winter. <laughs> so far we're doing pretty good it's gonna get all the way up to 50 up here today so 
Um, Candy, since you've been around uh, Golf 8.5 for, for a while, um, I don't know if you have Steve. Like, Steve can go first. Okay. We'll make it quick. <laughs> we we'll got a long way to go. Just quick introductions. Candy, okay. you go. I, I, I was, um, I was, Steve sat in on Kay's intro in Boston and um, I was just, you know, I was off somewhere else doing something. And he comes back and he ended up actually talking to his um, college roommate into taking a lesson with Kay. And I was like, I'm fine with the person that I'm with. And all of a sudden his roommate, they call me on the phone after a, at least a two hour lesson, if not three with Kay and just spouted accolades, accolades. And this guy rarely has taken a lesson. He was Never. all over the all Never. over the map, Never. so excited with her. And so then I got hooked. Good, thank you. Okay, I'm, I got a whole bunch more people popping on. So um, let me just go to some, uh, uh, well, not quite newbies. Um, who else do I have? Uh, Frank George Margo. Um, uh, Monica, introduce yourself real quick. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I was a little late. Did the turkey trot this morning, so got my five miles in to the turkey trot, so it was fun. We usually do it like 150 people, but on Thanksgiving morning, of course, it's virtual now, so it was pouring yesterday, so we decided to do it this morning at 7.30 instead, so... I'm just running home, literally. Um, anyway, I just started golf, what, five years ago? Um, but was kind of flatlined this last year. Didn't really feel like I was getting any better. Um, totally frustrated. But now I'm starting, I think, to gain some momentum. I'm doing my 8.5 right now in the living room, so... But I'm playing this afternoon, just nine. I think Pleasant Valley here will be closing uh, after the weekend. So my, we, we were able to squeeze in a, a 110 time or 150 time. So we're probably going to play nine, get something in anyway. Anyway, I, I'll just brag on you. You did one of our first Q&As with us and everybody gave you advice. And yeah. uh, that afternoon she went out and played ahead her first hole in one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a great testimonial for the Q&A. Um, yeah. yeah. How about Lynn? Lynn Cotter? Oh, unmute. You're still muted. Sorry, I'm, I just unmuted myself. First of all, congratulations. I still have not had my first hole in one yet. So anybody who gets one, I'm like, yay. Um, I'm Lynn Cotter and um, I am, I've been golfing for many years, um, I think almost 30 years now, but um, I'm always trying to learn uh, about golf, more about golf, I'm trying to improve my game. I actually uh, just started a blog this past year and um, I'm excited to actually bring um, the golf 8.5 program to some of my followers. Um, and we're going to start, I think the next session this Tuesday, uh, which will run for five weeks. So very excited. Yeah. I can probably go to, I think Margo is one of your followers. I haven't met her yet. So Margo, if you want to oh. say something, so yeah, there you go. Margo, <laughs> go ahead. Well, I'm old and I play <laughs> tennis and my friends who are my age who played tennis stopped playing tennis but kept on playing golf and so i decided even though i don't want to stop tennis yet that golf might be the way to go into the next 10 years of my life and so i know nothing i, I had a minute and a half in high school a thousand years ago and i'm left-handed so i thought i needed a left-handed club and anyway, I have now you can just tell I'm, I'm pushing the limit right now I know nothing I I'm scared to death of you guys who who actually play this game um, and I'm happy now they're pretty intimidating yeah I mean they're no they're not at all <laughs> trust me man. this is such an open group and stuff like that and let me segue into I think uh um uh, it's Stacy now all right we got the right name on there Stacy's here um and she's also one of um 
uh, the followers to Lynn on the links. Yeah, um, I, I got introduced to Kay through that and uh, just wanted to um, uh, consider uh, lessons for the first time in my life. I played on and off since I was a kid. My dad was an avid player and my brother became one. Um, I can play uh, inconsistently. Um, I get frustrated sometimes. My scoring, I have no idea what my score would be because the most I do is get excited if I had a two putt instead of a three putt. Um, <laughs> So, uh, and, and I'm also a left-handed player, so it's always been challenging to try and transcribe what a right-handed teacher does, but I feel like I'm potentially at this point where I'd like to uh, um, take on a, um, a, a technical aspect to the game to see if I can uh, bring my swing down in the same spot on a consistent basis. So I wanted to sit in this morning to get a better understanding of uh, 8.5 and and who's participating in it. So that's why I'm here. Well, I'll say something about left-handed players. I once did a clinic and uh, actually it was just all women and I had seven women in it. Okay, five were left-handed. So I, <laughs> so I really had to switch my thinking. By the end of that, I was definitely the one that was confused. But um, we, we'll, we'll transpose it. We use first hand, second hand, or forward hand, back hand, or whatever. Lucia, good morning. Do you want to say a few words? Morning. Uh, yes, actually, um, I think things are really clicking now. My backswing, I'm actually turning instead of throwing my hip out. <laughs> so, and I'm coming through the ball much better. And um, Hitting, um, hitting better shots and getting to the greens um, and, and less strokes, better contact. Yeah, it it's finally feels right. Bob is like, "Wow, your backswing really looks good." <laughs> so yeah, that's it, great. Yeah, you've done two or three workshops. We've done some in-person lessons, and so yeah. that, that that's it, a little bit of combination of everything. And it feels so different. And we both joined a new club, so. We don't go, we don't belong at Valley anymore. That was kind of, it was starting like it was going to close up anymore. Yeah, yeah. So we actually love where we are now, actually much nicer. So, um, you have okay. to we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to do a workshop there. We'll try that. Yeah, the greens are very different. They're very um, tricky, fast. Um, so it's, it's a, like a learning curve, but we're getting there. So, um, yeah, I'm just happy that I'm able to actually feel the swing now and know you know what the correct swing actually feels like. so, it's, but it's taken what two years a year and a half two yeah it's, it's a, a process i say 10 days and then but i might kind of lie a little bit about that <laughs> no but then you go back to your old habits correct and you think you're doing it right and then you're not so as long as i do my setup and in in um GK. if i do that then i bake really uh, much better contact with the ball. And especially if I'm lining up, the ball actually goes where it's supposed to go. When I'm when I'm too quick and I'm like, okay, if I miss a step because I feel like I'm being rushed or something, then the ball doesn't go where it's supposed to go. So. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? It okay. is. <laughs> Good morning, Donna. Donna just joined us too from uh, down in Venice. Good morning, Smiley. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Same to you. Um, just we did a quick introduction. Just tell them where you are, what you did. I'm always proud of what you did. As if, uh -huh. I, as if I had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have everything to do with it. Uh, I'm trained as a concert flutist and had the great opportunity to play pretty much all over the world. And uh, I have always loved athletics. I was kind of a natural at some things. The latest, the latest things I did were um, Ironman, but I came to golf and want to play well. And I'm um, from flute playing. I, know, I practice a lot. But I have to say that um, 8.5. If if you're going to go to golf, this is the way to go. And uh, to have a classic swing, to to be able to feel like you know what you're doing. This is this is it. And Kay is incredibly insightful. She just she sees she see she sees the essence of what is happening, and uh, what to do about it. And the GCAP is essential. And there's always something new to learn. You're always picking up details. And the more details you get, and the more you're able to understand them, the better it gets. 
Thank you. That was very nice. Okay, um, I have one more comment. I forgot to tell you last week when uh, Barbara and I played, we actually uh, booked ourselves in with this guy that um, we, we didn't know. And right off the bat, he says, you guys have a very nice swing, very similar swing, very consistent, nice. You're hitting the, you guys hit the ball fabulous. So, and he's, so he was talking about his wife. And um, so we told him about you and to look you up. And, and so you may have a new student coming. So we started a new webinar this coming Tuesday um, that, that Lynn is promoting and stuff like that. So um, that'd be great if you mention it and stuff like that. Yeah. But so he's I'm, like, he commented on the swing, how, how nice it was. Oh, great. That we, we had we similar like, we like showing everybody off. This is great. Yeah. Let me introduce a couple of the guys that have uh, been certified golf 8.5 instructors. Uh, there'll be uh, George and uh, then Troy Tomlinson, who's our director of uh, instruction. Um, but I'll have uh, uh, George uh, say something. He's also in Orlando first, and then we'll get to Troy. Hey, everybody. My name is George down here in sunny Orlando, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, I've been with, I've worked with Kay for what, a couple seasons now um, down here. And so that's how I got to know her. And I'm a late bloomer in golf. Uh, I've, I've, I'm a, uh, teaching pro for about what six years now and so I'm a little later in life but I love the game love the passion love the uh, 8.5 method I do study a lot of other people's methods I went to school and all that formal education but it is nice to to finally have learned uh, you know 8.5 and what's right and what's wrong uh, about different people in their swings so it's been a lot of fun and like somebody said earlier you're always striving and striving and striving to get better so that's what I'm trying to do and you are getting through, so yes. So, uh, Mr. Troy, my man. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, so, in addition to being the director of instruction for 8.5 in, in Florida, I'm also the director of golf for Fairways for Warriors, which is a uh, it's a nonprofit. We uh, we provide golf and golf services to combat wounded veterans oh. uh, to help reduce the suicide rate. Uh, get outside, get the ball in the air, have fun, bring everybody together. And 8.5 is what we teach um, everybody. Uh, so no matter what your injury is, uh, whether it be mental or physical, uh, we can still use 8.5. It's, it's, it's a brilliant uh, methodology to, to use. I've, I bought in from the first time I saw it. My golf game has gone to levels that I never thought I'd get at. And, uh, and it's a joy to teach and I love being with Kay. And, and I feel the same way about my, my fellows at Fairways for Warriors. The first time I ever met them, I was a little intimidated by all these uh, big vets and stuff like that. But then as we got out on the range, I said, oh, I've got to go over and get my bag. And someone says, let me get it for you. And then I said, I got to need my paint can over here. Let me get it for you. So no matter what I had, I was like, this is this is what they call service. <laughs> so <laughs> it was great. So we do thank all of them always for their service. And they're absolutely fabulous to work with. Um, I think, um, let's see, is she still on? Is this is for next week, so she can't say very much today. I thought she got on. Did she, did she leave me? Debbie? You're about Debbie? Debbie, yeah, she, she just was? left the room. She was there. She's still active, but yeah, she's not at her computer. <laughs> Debbie? There she comes. Debbie. Okay, now yeah, you can hear <laughs> This is Debbie, uh, Debbie and Pat, Pat, don't see your face. You have to get down so you can see your face. You're not going to say very much today because you're going to be our featured speaker for next week. But Debbie Austin and I have known each other for a lot of years. <laughs> we won't, I'll just say a lot of years um, when we were all players. And Debbie won, um, was on the LPGA, won five tournaments in the 70s. Uh, and is still a very avid player, a uh, very good player. And then uh, Pat is next to her. Why don't you each just say a couple things, uh, whatever, but you're going to save most of your Debbie for next week. <laughs> Debbie? Pat, oh, what am I saying? I'm just saying happy uh, Thanksgiving to yes. everybody. <laughs> and uh, we're enjoying this beautiful Florida weather. It's uh, going to go into the low 80s today. And 
we're looking forward to next week. We're going to have some cooler weather in the 60s, and, which is mm -hmm. cool for us. And Shannon, we're looking forward to tomorrow with you concert. I am. And listen, I'm going to put I'm going to put Pat on the spot. Tomorrow's her birthday, so everybody say happy birthday to Pat. I was at her birthday party last year when it was a surprise. And I think it was do you want me to tell the number or do you want me to tell the number? Um, do you want to tell the number from last year? Oh, do you mean how old I am? Yeah. I'm going to be tomorrow 81. Yay. And she's still, yay, yay, yay. still very avid oh, look. She's playing. <laughs> I love it. Donna, you're great. <laughs> hey, but what's going on? Um, Donna was playing the flute. Happy birthday for her is what she was doing. So, um, so I, I, we. This is the first time we've really done introductions all the way around because we've had some new people. But it's been kind of interesting because I think for the new people, everyone's going to go, "What's GCAP? What's Golf 8.5?" Um, and yeah. it's kind of interesting as as you get into this, it starts to be. Um, what do I want to say? It starts to be uh, the, kind of the Golf 8.5 language. Um, it's kind of interesting because people will say, well, I'm not in position one, I need to be in this. And, and it's really kind of neat because it, it really helps when we make the Zoom calls, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I call this Q&A, so I'm gonna open it up and ask if anybody's got any questions, um, anything that's been happening this week that I should know about. I think she got shut off. Oh, I have a quick question. Sure, Lynn. Good. Um, so I noticed uh, this week, somebody told me this. They they observed my swing and they were saying, oh, you know, you have such a smooth swing with your wedges and, you know, your high irons, like you're not my nine iron. And then they said, when I pull out my three wood, which is always my, the, the club that sort of gives me the most trouble. They said, you really don't have that smooth swing anymore. It's like a very sort of, rushed and then clench like sort of tightening up right when I hit the ball <laughs> and then go through. So I was wondering if there's any uh, advice that you could mention. <laughs> yes. Um, I get <laughs> smooth. Right? Now I talk about the three wood often uh. and in, in, uh, in theory it should go the farthest. And so women have to always hit your driver three wood probably pitching wedge etc cetera, etc cetera, because you got a lot of par fours out there men only probably have to hit a fairway wood on the par fives which are there are only four of them but women have to hit it um 14 times when i started playing golf the fairways used to be cut like the first cut of the rough so i could hit a driver off the fairway today i don't have a three wood <laughs> that's under my bed and it's never going to see the light of day it it doesn't have enough loft on it because the fairways now and i, I can say this there's enough men on here and we got troy and frank and and george is that fairways are cut for men they're all hitting short irons to the greens or shorter irons to the greens and yet women have to off this these tight tight lies have to hit um uh your three wood you have a chance maybe 25% of hitting it well. So what, yeah, what's really kind of interesting is that um, at the Pelican, the LPGA uh, tournament last week, every time that they asked somebody to comment on, on where they were, the first thing the commentator said, well, the lie isn't very good, the lie is good, the lie is tight, the lie is this, the lie. And they talked about the lie all the time. And that's what amateurs don't look at very often. You always just, I got to get my scope out, see how far I am, see how far I'm going. And then you just pick a club because of distance. The golf professional looks at it because of the lie. And um, I can't think of who won, but she had a very bad lie um, that she was actually in a divot. So she had to actually do a different type of swing, different type of shot, different type of club. So the three wood is your hardest one to hit, even though it should go the farthest. <clears throat> The, the difference between clubs for women, t 
typically is five, maybe seven yards, which isn't a lot. So sometimes you're gonna be better off hitting your hybrid or a five wood or, they don't make many seven woods anymore because people have gone to their hybrids and, and things like that. So you're better off getting better contact if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and my five wood is actually my favorite club. So mm -hmm. I should just maybe <laughs> stick to that. <laughs> stick to it. <laughs> and hybrids, I do love hybrids too. Yeah, and they actually made, the, they actually came up with the hybrids because the hybrid has, you know, a flatter base on it, you know, which makes it easier to hit off of a tighter lie rather than an iron, which you're gonna stick in the ground pretty often. And so that they got rid of all the, um, the longer irons. Actually, when I used to play, I was a very poor high, fairway player. And so I always hit my one iron, two iron, three iron, or four iron. You can't find them anymore. So uh, Debbie will relate to this because way back when we played in the 70s, but the fairways were cut much, you know, we had these that kind of little fluffier lies. Um, but, well, that's yeah. funny because sometimes I do prefer to, to hit out of the rough if it's like a little bit shorter. Like if it's if the ball is perched up a bit, I actually find it easier to hit my five wood out of there. That's why you've got some cushion <laughs> yeah. underneath it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I don't know if George or Troy want to say anything on the lies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I what I, oh, go ahead, Troy. Oh, basically what she just said, just aim at the... Uh, at the rough, <laughs> stay out the fairway. <laughs> but, but I find a lot with myself and and whenever I'm uh, doing a playing lesson is the, the the three wood the the mental uh, game that you have to play with yourself because you're aiming for a further target doesn't mean you swing harder and faster and that's probably what you're doing, Lynn, is you're you're, you're probably trying to, to make it go that far rather than letting it go that far. So trying to keep that same swing thought that you do, whether you have a wedge in your hand or, or driver, whatever, um, that's that's 90% of the problem uh, outside of the lie, I think. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Kay, since yeah. you brought this up before, I used to try to hit the, the three. I put it in the bag, I don't take it out, but I also, I always look at the lie and our fairways are not the same. So on the tight fairways, I always use the hybrid and it goes further than the, the um, fairway would ever would. But on the fairways that have cushion, then I feel very comfortable taking out the, um, the five fairway. And so that's the way after Kay told me, it made all the difference in the world of uh, how to navigate that and feel good about it. Right. Yeah. I, it's, don't, even, I don't even carry a three wood. Um, right now I go from a three hybrid to a driver. I don't have anything in between the two. Yeah. See, and those all have more loft. And so you really want to get the loft because <clears throat> people always going back to kind of what Troy said too, is that, People always think that speed gives you distance. It does, but centeredness of contact, every quarter of an inch you're off the center of the club face, every quarter of an inch you're gonna lose somewhere between 10 to 20 yards in distance and direction. So sometimes slowing your speed down actually gives you better contact um, so that you actually get more distance with less speed because you're making better contact, more control of, of the whole thing. I can see George nodding his head and stuff like that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Um, so, so all of that said, Lynn, I think the uh, the lesson here is take that three wood and put it under your bed. <laughs> put it away. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's kind of interesting because it's then because at the other end of the spectrum of where your clubs are, you can add a couple more wedges, which gives you a lot more flexibility in your short game. Because since we can only have fourteen clubs and and. Uh, which greens are today faster. And so that's why, we, you know, when let's say Debbie and I were playing way back when, I mean, all we had was a sandwich. We didn't have a 52, 56, 58, 60 degree wedges. I mean, it was just a sandwich. And that was probably about a 48, maybe 50 degrees wedge. So they've added 10 degrees more loft that you have variables on because the greens are much faster than they used to be greens equipment are much better than they used to be. So 
because um, somebody was commenting about they three putted because the greens are so fast, uh, and they can be quite fast. So, mm -hmm. yeah, three wood is my my least used club in my bag. Uh, on, on a par five, uh, I feel much better hitting driver wedge wedge and having a decent shot at birdie than I would driver three wood and not knowing where it's going to go. Uh, you know, to give up that eagle opportunity for a better shot at a birdie, I'll take that all day long. Sounds to me like you drive a, a decent distance then compared to <laughs> yeah. myself, uh, where I'm, you know, 120 yards at my present physical state and my age and some injuries. Um, you know, I, I used to drive a further distance, but now I'm having to adapt my, uh, my game to a shorter driving capability and finding myself in exactly the situation you've just been talking about with the, uh, the fairway woods. So this is a very valuable conversation to overhear. Right. Well, so like they said, the women are always going to hit it a shorter distance. So even on the par fours, you're going to need those longer clubs to, to, to get in. Yeah. But, uh, Hopefully, you know, since you're, since you're new to 8.5, you're going to get a better contact. You're going to gain a lot more distance than what you have right now. And Hopefully. then you'll still be able to split your distance on, on the longer, on the par fives, uh, to where you can use maybe a mid iron or a long iron and, mm -hmm. and replace that three wood completely. Yeah. I, I mean, I have noted myself that I'm connecting much better with my hybrid. Um, and occasionally uh, my five and six woods uh, are doing quite well for me if I focus on my swing. Not having had Kay's lessons yet about how to better my swing, but um, it is interesting to hear about the concept that uh, only, you would only make 25% of your shots uh, with the longer fairway woods anyway. So that's an interesting way to, to look at the hole now uh when we're back to playing um I, I live in toronto canada so our mm. season has come to an end um but i was able to play much more this season and actually start to think a little bit about strategy uh, when i'm standing there trying to figure out what club to grab out of my um kit um but i found that my four wood i don't have a three anymore but i have a four wood and I was struggling with um, inconsistency in my connecting, but I found a swing with my hybrid because of the loft. I always felt more comfortable with it. So it's very interesting to hear the confirmation of, of uh, what you're saying um, kind of backs up what I was discovering in the field. Thank you. Well, it's kind of interesting because I started these Q and A's just when COVID started, just to kind of keep in contact with people and they have kept going. And every week what I have found, and everybody else is sharing so many things, we're all learning so many different things from just having these conversations. Uh, as my business partner, Eloise says, it's like we're kind of sitting around the clubhouse, kind of just shooting the breeze about what I did on the 18th hole. <laughs> and Shannon's laughing because she knows every golfer Oh, let me just tell you about my round today. You know, and they start from hole one, go all the way to 18, you know, <laughs> right? Um, but it's kind of interesting too. I'll be sending out a, um, just as just my little commercial blurb, on uh, the things that we're going to do. We've got some things coming up for Black Friday, which I may not get to until small business Saturday. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're going to be, be putting out our, our, um, our teaching club so that those of you that are in colder companies, the countries, like I'm in, will have a short little teaching club that you can be able to practice inside. So that's gonna be coming out soon. And we're gonna be doing some specials on our, our webinars and continue them all through um, the, the winter, et cetera, et cetera. One of the, the first one that we do is the fundamental webinar course. The next one we do is what we call the strategy five week course. And then the last one we're also doing is the skills and drills webinar course. And then some people have taken each of them twice. Um, just because, and they're also then doing, uh, we're also going to be doing online personal lessons, which people have related to me that besides the webinars, they're also doing one-on-one -on -one, um, inline lessons. And I'll go with Donna a little bit because she always talks about her spatula. When I gave her her first <laughs> in, the, in the house lesson, we 
she was right by her glass kitchen table. And I said, put the club away. And she went, I said, go get a spatula. And so she, I was afraid she was going to break it. So <laughs> there's a lot of things that you can do indoors. Um, and some of us are, are in cold country and some of you are now just getting into your season. So there'll be a lot of things that you can do. But I think what's fun for me about this is everybody um, shares things and, um, even well, I'll always go to Cheryl because you know you're our little handicap, but she asks very good questions because of they're still they apply to everybody no matter what level you're at. That makes sense. Absolutely. I know I'm really, and I and I continue to learn. That's you know, I was in the skills and drills, and I was still learning, and you know, a lot of, a lot of you get whatever you're learning you can get further and further refined and you understand it better and better so i i have no desire to to um stop taking these lessons and being in on these calls yeah it's kind of, it's great because cheryl you and i we talked about well just about two months ago now about changing your putting stroke but i'll i'll kind of go to debbie a little bit too because when i saw debbie last year mm -hmm. she'd go let me, let's just walk, I stayed at her house for a little bit. She said, let's go outside and just give me a putting lesson. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're still changing and we're still all, you know, the, the search for the perfect golf swing, right, Debbie? Right. <laughs> still searching. <laughs> <laughs> 72 well, I, years into it. Wow. I actually thought I had a pretty good putting stroke. I was telling you this last week. Um, Okay, when uh, I saw one video of yours that you had um, sort of given to me and I was like, oh, that's how I'm supposed to get it to be straight. And it was so simple and I tried it and it all of a sudden started actually going on the line on my putting mat because I have lines now on my putting mat that I just got and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. One simple it, thing, you know? It is kind of interesting. I mean, I go back to the tour days and Debbie made the tour and I went to nine qualifying schools and I missed by a shot three times. But it was all due to my putting. I could hit the ball really long then at the time. I've lost probably 100 yards since then, but I couldn't putt very well. So after I stopped trying to get on the tour, I changed my whole putting philosophy and now I putt a whole lot better. I just don't hit it as far. <laughs> so it, it does change with age and flexibility. I will say that. Um, so, um, any other questions, any other comments? I'll make a quick comment that, um, you referred to doing the webinars, which I've done and are fabulous. Um, couple that with the zoom lessons and I highly recommend that to everybody because then, um, Kate can really see what you're doing. And, uh, even though I've done lots of the, the, um, webinars, uh, sometimes you just don't quite understand something and she's able to pinpoint that and be helpful and also it's always great to have Cheryl on is because as you said uh, very advanced players ask just incredible questions and there's so many aha moments so it's all great thank you Donna yeah thank you I will say this too, that um, for those of you who wanting things to breakfast, I'm going to be sending out our Black Friday specials, like I said, in an email blast, hopefully sometime today. Um, I've just got, the kids are realizing, my kids are texting me now, my teenagers, it's going to be 50 degrees, so they want to get outside and do lessons today now. <laughs> but um, we have a lot of new affiliate partners, um, the, the nail golf has gloves, they've got new shoes. Um, we're going to be doing, like I said, our clubs. Um, uh, we've got uh, Orca is bags, the new golf bags. So we're going to be designing our own bags, uh, which will be our little pencil bags, your carry bags. Oh. Um, yeah. So that's going to be coming up. So they're in the process of designing that, but that's uh, that's going to be kind of fun because I always suggest sometimes when you're doing golf 8.5, only take four clubs out there with you. So the the new little bags are going to be good. Um, so it's on our affiliate page on Education Golf, and uh, we will also be doing our Black Friday specials on um, uh, a, de a definite discount for Black Fridays on our personal online lessons uh, for the packages, et cetera. So you may check that out. It's kind of out there right now. And the other big announcement is I'm gonna be at Turning Stone Resort and Casino. That's also online for the winter. 
um, which is absolutely a fabulous place to go and, and have a resort. And they're very high in their, their COVID protocols. Trust me, they are. And uh, so there's lots of good things happening. Where is that resort? Oh, it's in upstate New York. Okay. Um, it's by uh, Syrac Syracuse, Utica. Utica. You, sir. So that, that's where actually Debbie lived 10 minutes from there, <laughs> which is ironic. Um, it's a beautiful resort. They have, uh, in the summertime, we'll have full access. They have five golf courses, championship golf courses. Well, one's a par three. Uh, they have a dome that has 40 hitting stations and the short game area is built on two tennis courts. It has two putting greens, uh, uh, three putting greens, two bunkers, and it has elevations and you can chip over the whole thing. So it's really a, a fabulous place to really work on your short game. So um, we'll be offering packages um, if people want to travel, but it's within car distance for a lot of people up here. So. Okay, and remember, next week at 9 o'clock, we'll have Debbie Austin as our featured guest, and we'll talk a lot about, about, more about life on the tour and instruction, because you had some very, very famous instructors when you were playing. So, happy day, Thanksgiving, day after Thanksgiving. Thanks, everybody, for being on, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.